literally, they're that dangerous. They've given them a cage. How do I start this? Sup. What is up, everyone? Fish Shop Matt here. That's how I start this. Got something different for you tonight. I have been working hard all day. Cheryl, hardly working all day. Yeah, Standard, sat on her phone doing nothing. And you've been off gallivanting for half a day. Supposedly I've been off gallivanting half the day. I went to pick up spare parts to fix the systems. Anyway, enough of that. We've got something different for you tonight. Still telling me I'm gallivanting. Um, got something different. Oh, I wish I had had Mackey's. I wish. I parked at Screwfix and I went, oh, I could have a Mackey's. And I went, no, didn't. I can swear on my life, did not have Mackey's today. I'd have loved to have. Tomorrow, tomorrow on midday off, I will. But anyway, we've got something different. We have tried out a new plant supplier tonight. Um, could be bad, could be good. Who knows? Um, but there were some rare species on there that we haven't had before. So, um, here they are. This little box here is our little box of plants. We'll let's do a bit of an unboxing, show you what's in there. I don't know, there's some variegated Anubias, there's some stuff in vitro. We just tried a load of different stuff just to see what it comes in like. So, uh, yeah, let's do an unboxing and see what the plants are like. Is it still working? Mic's still on? Yeah. People. <laughs> I ain't got no bold spot. Have I? Or maybe. Who knows? Right. Haven't you guys got work to do? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Oh. Quarter of an hour. Right, we've got 15 minutes to um. We've got 15 minutes to unbox this. Right. So. Dun, dun, dun. First up on the list, Anubius Jungle Star. Ooh. I don't want to see the head. They just want the plants. The plant's the exciting thing. Jungle Star. Oh, I can see the variegation in it. Oh, you guys can't because it's really dark. Hang on, let's move the camera. Right, so the lighting's awful here. Um, I'm going to move the camera around to the side of the tank and hopefully I can use the kettle to light all the plants. But this is the plant. This is unboxed. Let's unbag them now. Right, so I can't get any better lighting because of the way the shop's lit. So we are going to just go through, unbox them, and I'll do some B-roll over the top. So the first ones are these little jungle stars, which aren't massively exciting, but what you've got on them is slight variegation. Um, so it looks like it's a really small species. I can't remember. We looked through all of them at the time and went through every single species and picked out the ones that we sort of quite liked the look of. So yeah, these have got slight variegation in the leaves and they look like a, maybe like a Nana Bonsai sort of species. So they're gonna be cool. They are, I can see the new leaves are coming through with sort of slight spotting on them, which is really, really nice. I was just thinking I might have to write all this down, but actually I'll have the video to go back to to check which ones are which. Right, so next up on the list we have got, what's this one here? Bulbatis heteroclita asiatica. Not sure I can say that on camera. These do look quite cool. So this I is that. Had them many, many years ago. Yeah, this is quite cool. So it's like, it honestly looks like an like a an ash leaf maybe, like like a like a tree leaf. I quite like them. A little bit different, like a lumpy fern. What? <laughs> Martin just sat on a sat on a wet stool. So yeah, that's a, that's an Asian bulbitis or bulbitis, however you want to say it. They do. They look like little tree leaves. I reckon they've just cut a tree down with them. I reckon that's all it is. Oh, this is the one we were excited by, Martin. Yeah, the isotesis. Isotesis. Iso. Isoestes, maybe. So this is like a really, really fine grass. It's quite weird though, because it's almost, um, not circular is the wrong word, cylindrical. Tubular, tubular grass, like tubular bells. But... <laughs> yeah, I like them. I think they're definitely, a couple of them have definitely got to be bought because I want them for a tank. Better get setting up another tank, hadn't I really? Otherwise I'm going to run out of space. 
So yeah, that's quite cool. ISO SDs, I've lost the name now, Martin. Viteta Vascular. La, la. That one. Yeah, that's it. What is this one? Oh, Microsorium APC Sunrise. So this is, yeah, this is that, so this is a golden typed Java fern with really funny leaves. So yeah, as you can see, it's got sort of serrated leaves down the edge and it's hard to pick it up on camera, but the new leaves are coming through with that slight like yellowy golden hint. So yeah, there. Do you know what? The plants so far are quite nice. A little bit different. They're packed really well as well. I was a bit worried when I saw the box, how small the box is. But actually, they're quite good sizes and they've packed them really well. So yeah, that's a sun, sunrise, was it Martin? Sun, sunrise Java fern, that's quite cool. I've got another bag of ISO SDs there, so we'll keep them to one side and I'll pop them in in a minute. What is that? Bucephalandra, green, broad leaf again not one yeah not one that we're uh yeah not a scientific name not one we're able to get hold of okay yeah so like really big round leaves on this one so that's quite nice new leaves are coming through like a yellowy greeny sort of color with red stems that's cool another nice one they're just a little bit different aren't they really just something a little bit different Oh, I can see some weird pots down there that I'm a little bit worried about. They look very odd. Put them down there. Right, so that's the Bulbitis. Nope, Bucephalandra in. What have we got next on the list? Oh, Microsorium. So another Java fern. This is Golden Sparkle. Oh, Golden Sparkle. I'll be totally honest. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, it's got weird leaves. The leaves look like, that one looks like the sword of an Urukai. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, different leaves, but not overly golden sparkly. Maybe that will come out once, uh, once it settles in a little bit. Maybe we'll get some golden sparkles out of it at a later date. But again, a little bit different. We're gonna have to make labels for every single one of these. Also, I filled this tank very full and every handful that I put in is uh, filling the tank up even more. Uh, what have we got next? Golden Anubius Batari variety nana. So this in theory will be like a lime green Anubius nana, which yeah, it is. Wow, it's really bright green. It's hard to pick it up on the camera there, but that is almost like a golden pothos, yellowy green. Yeah, they're cool. I'm liking those. Oh yeah, they're much greener under the water than Anubius, and a normal Anubius. They're almost, they're almost like Limnophila green, which is quite cool. Right, that's them. What else have we got here? I'm gonna leave them for a minute because they look weird. I'm a little bit worried about them. Oh, this is Anubius Batari butterfly. So this was the crinkly leafed, I think. Yeah, this is like the crinkly leafed Batari. So yeah, it looks like a bit like a coffifolia, so it's got those crinkly leaves to it. Um, nothing too exciting, not as exciting as the golden sparkles. The name, well, I suppose butterfly, you know, butterfly's cool, isn't it? I'm gonna have to move a bit of bogwood, Martin, to get more space. Are you being a lovely man? I am. You're a star. That way I can keep them in order and I remember what order I put them in. Okay, so the ISO SDs is there. We are just left with weird pots and one bag. Now this is my favorite one is why I've left it till last. This is, I'm gonna move sides actually so I can put it over here. So, oh, they bagged them individually. They are that special. So this is Anubius Batari Variety Nana Pinto. And this bad boy is white. Wow. That is a really white. Hang on, I can't see if you are actually seeing that. Yeah. yeah. That is white. Um, yes. That's possibly the coolest one. That is awesome. I like them a lot. 
special tank for them. Right, so I'm going to move the camera because I've got to resort some things and then we'll do the last of the box in a second. Get out, Mr. Pinto. I've just moved the camera slightly. The guys have just gone off. Oh, sorry, guys and girls. Thank you. Guy and girl, Guy and girl yeah. They've gone off. So I'm just going to move the camera down here. Um, now, I didn't realise there was any potted left, but these ones are super special because what they've done is they've protected the pot with another pot. Um, and these are Anubius Batari Broad White. Now, literally, they're that dangerous. They've given them a cage with masking tape that's tucked to the bag. So let's unearth one of these. Oh, wow. That is super white. Ready for an algae fest? That is really cool. So yeah, we've got another five of them. They can go next to the Pintos. So they're Anubius Nana Broad, right. I'm gonna get these out. These are gonna take me a little bit, so I'm gonna unpack these quickly. Last few bits we've actually got are um, some little tissue cultures. Uh, so these are Bucephalandra Brownie Phoenix. So they come in these wicked little pots. I will open one just to see. Oh, my uh, focus is right over the top there. Yeah, they are really nice. Really, really nice little Bucephalandra there. So yeah, that's Bucephalandra Phoenix, which is quite cool. I'm gonna put them over there with our other pots. What is this? Oh, amazing, we've got some Nana Pinto whites. These are in little... Oh, look at them. Little Pinto white Anubiuses. How cool are they? And then, what's lastly? Lastly, oh, this was a species of crypt that uh, me and Danny had never seen before. They've come in big pots. Really big pots. This is a uh, Cryptocorn Axel Roddy. Axel Roddy? Yeah, nice. Nice little fine crypt. That's a good amount of crypt in there, to be fair. That's grown on really, really well. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, some wicked little species there. Definitely uh, gonna pick up some of the isoestes for myself at home and definitely one of those Anubiuses. I've got that uh, variegated Anubius at home, so I'm now thinking that, like, a little variegated Anubius cube tank or something would be really, really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how they settle in with that golden sort of colour you're getting to the tips. The, the broadleaf boosts are amazing, but yeah, quite a cool delivery and all. Something different anyway, so I'll uh, see you in the next one. <sighs> Did you honestly think I could get a delivery of like exciting plants that I've never had in the shop for, what is it, 17, 16? 15 years, 16 years, I don't know. But I couldn't not buy some. And obviously I've filled all my tanks downstairs now with other plants, so there's not really space in there for them. Um, so I need a new tank. So I've managed to acquire some space in my spare bedroom. Um, so yeah, little scaper cube. Ignore, well don't ignore, lovely Harry Potter flags in the background, so we'll leave them up. Um, but yeah, got a little scaper 25, bright light unit on it, so you can see. I can't reach it. Ah. Yeah, so quite a bright light unit on it. I've picked out some of the variegated plants. Some of the plants don't like bright lighting, so I might have to mess around, might have to get a timer for it, or might have to tape over some of the light, but that'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd do a little escape for it, because I honestly don't want to miss having these plants. I think we'll get a delivery from them again, but it might be, it might not, you know, you, you might see these plants once and I might not be able to get them for six months. So when the studio's done, I can move this tank from the spare bedroom into my new studio, into my nano tank room, hopefully with all these exciting rare plants. Hopefully I can keep them alive. Hopefully I can make them thrive and flourish, but um, yeah, we'll see. So I've got a bag of plants. So I picked up just a few of the different ones, a couple of the Java Ferns, Golden Sparkle and Sunrise, and one of the Big Leaf Booses, the Isoestes, the like grass plants, I've got them. And what I've also got is 
this cool bit of bogwood, which I'm thinking is going to sit in that back corner. Um, I've got some pebbles. I'm thinking of just like rivery style scape with a big imposing piece of bogwood, a load of those plants, and that's it. So really quick, really simple scape, just so that I can get these plants growing and happy and just to make sure that I've got some. So uh, well, let's crack on with the scape and let's do a bit of scaping quickly. Get this going. Um, don't know what else, I'm just going to sit here in the afternoon. It's so hot in England at the moment. Um, but yeah, let's scape it quickly. So these are really simple little tanks. I'm not going to bother with the heater on here because I don't think it will need it. It's only plants going in here. Um, I might pop a heater on here eventually, but my house runs at like 25 degrees anyway, so probably not much need. Little hang on the back inter um, little internal, hang on the back internal, that contradicts itself, doesn't it? Little hang on the back filter, little surface skimmer that floats up there, so that'll be nice and simple. Um, but yeah, that bit of wood, sorry, that's my face. This bit of wood, I've still got the tag on it, look. Get off. I'm thinking, like that. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, I think that's gonna look awesome. But it's just gonna need some pebbles to prop it up and some substrate, I think. Yeah, that's gonna look awesome. Maybe I need something coming off the top. If I move the camera up there, it comes all the way up there. Maybe I need something coming off the top of it as well. Anyway, we'll do that in a minute. Let's get some uh, rocks in there and some substrate and we'll start scaping. Right, so as we're not gonna have many fish in this tank, I'm gonna be brave and put the substrate straight in. Brave, stupid, whatever, but I'm not gonna put it in a bag, which possibly might come to cause me problems later, um, but maybe not. Obviously, I'm just using the uh, Oazi scaper soil again, because I love this stuff, and plus I've got some leftovers. So what we're gonna do, we'll do a little mound of it in the back. I'm gonna cover it with sand, because I just like a sand look. Or do I go, no, I'm not going full substrate. No, no, or do I? I could go full substrate. Yeah, do you know what? I'm gonna go full substrate. Let's move that light. I can't move that light, because it's, it's there. Let's just pour all this substrate in, see if I've got enough substrate. more than enough substrate oh yeah we're going full substrate we're not going to bother with sand that's an issue that sits way too far i've got to swap over the inlet for that hang on that's going to sit right down into all my substrate there is a spare inlet here hang on i'll be back i've got it they supply a shorter inlet with it so that makes life a little bit easier when I bank up that substrate in the back. That's better. Yeah, full on substrate system. Right. I'm confused now. I love sand substrates, but that dark's gonna look really cool with that bit of wood. We're going, we're going substrate only people. We're doing it. Should we do a bit more substrate? A little bit more substrate. It's not gonna hurt. Oh. Um, that just went all over the floor. Okay, I'm going to need to go get my hoover and hoover that up because I'm going to tread in all of that. Right, there we go. That was about 15 quid's worth of substrate I just poured on the floor. Yeah, substrate. We are going simple, full-on, substrate. That makes it easy, doesn't it? Right, next, we need pebbles. Let's go get some pebbles. Right, so I've got a little bag of pebbles. I don't know if this will be enough. I've got more. I always have pebbles kicking around. Oh, hang on, we need to get that wood in, don't we? I'm gonna have to glue this wood, I reckon, because it's quite buoyant. I think I wanna prop it up a little bit. So if we grab the ugliest looking rock, sit him underneath there. Because then I can glue that to that in a minute with a little bit of uh, cyanoacrylate glue. Oh yes. Yeah, just a few pebbles 
just placed in strategic places to be able to glue and add a bit of other texture. Let's come off the front a little bit, it will be cool. The only thing is I didn't plan to have, I planned to have some sand in here. So now I'm thinking I haven't got any foreground plants, but I think I've got some baby crypt petchy pink downstairs. So maybe I can use that in here. That might be a good shout. The ISO SDs is gonna go in the back here and here, so I wanna keep that open. Do you know what? I don't know if I'm gonna need many more. Maybe move him right to the front. Get that one in there. I could do something more imposing in that back corner just here. Something a little bit chunkier maybe. So I'm gonna go see if I've got something. I don't think I need three down at the front. I think I only need two down at the front. Oh, I don't know. Don't know anymore, but definitely need a bigger rock for that back. Let me go find a bigger rock. I need maybe a fist and a half size. I'll be back. Ow! Just dropped that other rock on my toe. I think I might've gone a bit big. Um, oh, I don't know. It might. See, this is always the problem. It's always worth having more hardscape than you think you need. Because when you come to do it, do you know what? And I've got just enough space to plant the isoestes in behind it. And that nestles into there really nicely. Really like that rock. Yep, done, sold. So now I'm gonna change up some of these other little ones just because I found some more. There are a few different shapes and tones and things. So yeah, I think we've got, I don't know actually, just a few different sizes might help to be fair. A few different sized ones, and I think we're golden. See, look at that, super simple, really quick scape. Do I want one over there? What do you reckon? Do I like that? I'm a big fan. Yeah, done. Big rock, big imposing piece of bog wood. We'll glue all that old place. It, blah, 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 blah. We'll glue all of that in place now. Yeah, big fan. ISO SD's in the back. Anyway, I'll talk to you about the plants now. Let's show you the hardscape quickly and show you how simple that is. Like literally, big rock in the back. So we're gonna probably put like a little Nubius in here maybe. ISO SD's, which is the grass plant behind it. And then we've just got a few pebbles littering the bottom. I might bring in some smaller pebbles once I've got the rest of the plants in. Um, but yeah, that's how simple escape can be. You don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to mess around. Like I say, this is just a super simple scape, really, for these plants to go in. So I don't often do it, but I've got a few of the rare plants below me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place them in their pots and just check that they fit. Sorry for the clip, I just clipped it back into the tripod. So let's move you I think that's a good view for you. Just move the camera to give you guys a bit of a better shot, to be honest, because yeah, it's tricky for me to see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, first up, we've got this Anubius, which is like a variegated Batari. I had to refill her, sorry, actually, I tell a lie. Now this came in under our new normal Anubius delivery. So you can see the normal green leaves here have got a slight variegation in them, but I'm hoping that I can bring these lower leaves where you can see this quite a lot of variegation. I'm hoping I can bring them through, but we'll see. You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. He is gonna sit in that back corner, I believe. Um, yeah, and then the ISO SDs can come in here. Then next up, I've got one of these awesome Java ferns. Now, I think this was the Sunrise, because um, I was Golden Sparkle and Sunrise. So he will probably sit down in there. So I'll glue him, because they're epiphytes, I'll glue him to a little rock 
um, so that he's got something to sit on. Then the other plants that I got was one of the variegated proper white Anubiuses. Um, yeah, really like them. They are one of my favourite. Now he is going to be like pride of place down here somewhere. Probably there. We've got one of the broadleaf Bucephalandras, which is really nice. He will probably go in that little gap in there. Just sit there for a minute, buddy. No, you don't want to? Let's move the rock out then. You can sit there. So he'll go in that gap. Then, golden Anubius. So that's like a really light green Anubius, quite different to the normal dark green of the Anubiuses that you get. So I reckon he'll sit on that left side. Nope, right side. Getting, me muddled, getting everything muddled up now. And then we've got the baby jungle star, which is a tiny little guy. He can go right in the front. Now I was thinking I was going to need actually some more crypts, but actually it doesn't need it. That is ample. Um, and then what I've got to go in the back, as I was saying, is the isoestes, which is this like tubular vallacy sort of looking plant. Now they're going to be a bit small at the moment, but they're going to be planted in behind that wood right at the back. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. It's quite nice to sometimes mark out your scape like this, just so you know roughly where everything's going to go. Now, all of those are epiphytes, barring the isoestes in the back. Isoestes? I'm sure that's how you say it. But anyway, other than the grass plant, they are all epiphytes. So what I'm going to get is little bits of gravel or pebble, glue them to that, and then just situate them in amongst it. Um, and yeah, that's that's a really quick, simple, nice scape. You don't have to make it over complicated. And as long as you enjoy it, super duper, you can't go wrong. So right, let's get these out and let's get them gluing. Hopefully it goes better than the last time I glued on camera in the uh, better tank, because honestly I lost, well, they kept unsticking themselves. So let's take these out, get them glued and get them back in. We've got some rocks, we've got some plants. We've got some glue. Obviously, any cyanoacrylate glue will work for gluing aquarium plants to rocks and wood. Um, I use the Superfish stuff just because we sell it at the shop and I, rem I remember to buy it, to be honest. That's pretty much the reason. Um, now, I know some of you will say, just a quick note, I know these are epiphytes. They don't necessarily need a substrate system. Um, my thought is if they get their roots down into the substrate, it's just going to help them, to be honest. It's not going to hurt to have substrate in there. It will help sort of balance it. And eventually there probably won't be many fish in here, but I might put some shrimp in there. So again, the substrate's just going to help them. Um, and it's not going to do any harm. Yeah, they are low, light, low level fertilizer feeders, but you know, I want to try and get these plants to grow. So anything I can do to help them will be brilliant. What we're going to do is we're going to start, how many have I got? I've got six plants five pebbles which is a slight issue so I might need to glue to one of these pebbles down here so um it's a very simple thing I've probably shown you in another two or three four five six videos I need something to put these plants on um I've got nothing to hold these plants with hang on a minute I'm going to go find a tray right found a lid to a plastic tub what I'm going to do slide that slightly across before it's got water in it and then this tray can sit here with all the plants on. I have got substrate on the table. Look at that trusty tray. He's here. Tray's here today. Right, so gluing wise, uh, what one should we do first? Let's do the golden pothos. Golden pothos? It's not a pothos. It reminds me of a pothos, but it's definitely not. Let's do the golden anubius. Right, that's a better view for you guys. So all we're going to do, we're going to give the tub a bit of a squeeze to get any residual water out of there. And then we're gently going to pull, hopefully, this plant out. There we go, of the basket. And then all of this rock wool just needs to come off. Oh, we've got two. So there's actually two separate plants in here. So we just need to get them out of the rock wall, get rid of that. Gentle, get rid of that. Job done. So we'll clean off the last of this rock wall just so it's not got too much going into the water. Um, you can do this with a fork as well, but these roots, they're not massive, so it's quite easy to do this with just your hands, maybe. 
maybe not. So once you've got all of that off, oh, this is going to take me ages that. Hang on, come back to me in a minute. There we go, that's good enough for me. So I was going to plant these together, I think I still will. Um, and they're going over on that right hand side. So I think what we'll use, this one looks good I think. We should be able to glue, oh that one, yeah there we go. So we can glue one to that side, one to that side and then place them in but that'll be perfect. So all we're going to do, we're going to grab our glue, we're going to put a little, we're going to put a little blob on there, just down through there, chuck that back down there. And then place him and hold him on. As simple as that. Now I'm going to hold that on for a little bit because the last time I done this on camera and I let go, the glue didn't set properly and uh, it fell off. So um, again, come back in a couple of minutes and it will be set. Ta-da! So there we go. Ah, my thumb. I've got glue on my thumb. There we go. Simple as that. So like I say, I'm hoping that these roots here will um, get down into the substrate and actually pull some nutrients from the substrate. So that is number one done. Simple as that. Now we've got to go through and do the rest of them. So um, yeah, let's time lapse this bit. So we have finished gluing. So that was the first one I'd done, the little golden Anubius look. He's on his rock. Uh, yeah, we've got the little jungle star, um, the little broad white or white one. I can't remember what that one's name is. But yeah, they are all stuck. I'm going to cheat a little bit with the Boosa Philandras. I'm actually going to wedge them into the rock next to the bogwood in here in a second. So let's get all these situated so that then I can uh, get the tank, well, maybe filled after this. Oh no, isoestes, need to plant all the isoestes with a pair of tweezers in behind. So uh, let's get the plants on rock in. Right, we are back. Right, so I had a bit of a work call there, so that took time to deal with that. I've now made the glass all misty so I've kept spraying the plants in between times um, but that's it I'm tempted to say the problem is petchy pink gets quite big but I've got some nice pots of it here and I wonder if I can keep it cut down a few little sprigs of it through here with some pebbles would look quite nice but I just don't want it to dominate those things no do you know what we're going to keep it it, the focus of this is the rare plants. Now what we need to do next is we need to put the isoestes in this back section here. So we're going behind the wood, possibly yeah, in behind there as well. So we'll pull him forward and put a few sprigs of that down there. Now I do need my tweezers for this, which irritatingly I've left downstairs, so I'm going to have to go grab them. Now where is the isoestes? There it is. So we've got the isoestes here. So yes, yeah, like a cool grass plant, but I think that will look wicked. Again, never grown this before. So this whole tank could just melt. The whole thing could just end up as, oh, there's a few bits of rock and a few bits of wood. So we're gonna get that one in there, plant him in clumps in behind there, and that's escape done. I have just realized though, I've got some of the lavender endlers, I think, downstairs. So I'm tempted to come and bring them up here, once this has settled in for a week or so, is to bring them up and put them in here. But let's get the isoestes in quickly, and then we'll have a look at, um, well, just finalising it and getting it filled with water. We've made a mess. We've planted the tank. Yeah, it's looking quite cool. Little jungle scape, quite simple, quite easy. All exotic plants I'm probably going to kill, but we'll see. Um, so I've put the uh, isoestes down the back here. So I'm hoping all of that there will then grow up sort of behind the wood. I've got loads of soil in my nails. Um, but yeah, all that will grow up behind the wood and create like a really cool, I don't know, sort of valisey, grassy sort of look to it. 
I'm going to get a few scatter stones in the front here just to fill in these gaps. I might pick up a plant from the shop and put something like maybe a smaller plant. I'll see what we get on the delivery tomorrow when I'm back in work. So I might put a smaller plant in the front. I'll have a look, see what we get in. Um, but I think that's pretty much there. Let's get it filled with water and uh, give it a few days to clear. But uh, yeah, let's get the water in it and get some of those scatter stones in it. Right, I'm going to prime the filter, so we're just going to fill the filter full of water. That is the tank full now. Fill that one up. Then hopefully we can get that one running. That's if I take the cable out of its tie before starting the filming. Would have been better, wouldn't it? But hey, it's all a learning curve. Right. Um, and on. Right, that should start sucking water through in a minute. It'll take a little bit of time to fill up this tube at the top, um, but it is coming up through now. A lot of water on my new light unit, look. Here we go. And we're running. Perfect. Cool. So we can let that one run through. I am thinking now, maybe a few little Bucephalandras, I think. Dot, 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 dot right low underneath all of these and then it will tie in with that broad leaf effect once that isoestes at the back grows in that'll be nice so um let's go see have i got some downstairs i might have some in the other tank i'll show you in a minute but i actually managed to rob a few little baby boosters off of my main colony down in the tank downstairs so just tucked a few little boosters to fill in those substrate gaps um and put them on a little bit of stones so that'll be perfect i've just got to keep an eye that they don't take over the main plants which is the golden the Jungle Star, yes it, and then the white one. The Bucephalandra broadleaf I'm not overly bothered about because he's quite a, a big thuggish species, so I don't mind him so much. But yeah, that's come out really, really nicely. All the plants that I wanted, all the specialist plants have got prime location. Right, just a quick thing before I leave it. I'm gonna uh, put some tap water safe in. God, uh, 10 mil per 50 liters. So yeah, five mil-ish, and there we go. That can go in there, and then we'll put some filter start in. Again, I can't remember, 10 mil per 50 litres, they're both the same. I think that's why I think it's wrong every time, because I think, oh yeah, they're not both the same. So there we go, 5 mil of that. That will get that filter started bacteria-wise. Hopefully then, I might get to add the uh, lavender endlers, if uh, time permits. So that's those two. Um, Done, done, done. I feel like that wood needs something. I'm gonna go and have a look if I've got a cutting of something that I can plant on that wood. And I'm gonna go have a look, bear with me. Right, so on the tank downstairs, I had this little cutting of variegated pothos, which I'm wondering, it might not. Uh, let's have a look. It's gotta get the leaves around the right way of this bit of wood. Uh, you go around that way, you go around that way. That sits in there. Come up a bit higher, maybe. Oh, hang on, that one needs to go around that side. And that can hook onto there. Got to get those roots in somehow. Put them down into there. And he'll get his water from there. Oh, I quite like that. Yeah, that looks cool. That works a treat. Yeah, I like that. Starting from the top, we've got the pothos, the variegated pothos. So I'm going to grow up that. I might have to sort of pin it back here a little bit but he's placed there for the minute and he's okay um the golden variegated anubius heterophylla 
he's in the back. The isoestes, you can't see above the rock yet, but I'm hoping that whole area will be full of that. Uh, you've got the Java Fern Sunrise, Sunset, nope, Sunrise, so he's really cool. Golden Anubias, love how lime green those leaves are, they're so cool. Broadleaf Bucephalandra, so yeah, he's going to sit there. The little Anubias Jungle Star, so you can see the variegations on that back leaf there, look, it's quite nice. And then the broad white Anubius back there. And then these are these little sprigs of Bucephalandra. I might replace them with something like low growing, like a carpeting plant, like Hemianthus or something. But yeah, I might not. I quite like the broad leaf jungly vibe that we've got going. And if all of these can sort of fill out this area, that's going to look wicked. The main reason for this is those rarer plants that I want to try and grow on. So we're going to fertilise this tank up. We've got the bright light unit on it. Anubias and Javas don't generally like bright light, but I've read that the variegations do like brighter lighting. So I'm going to have to just fine tune that as I go, really. That's the only way I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to get some plant food in here this afternoon, get that going. And then I'll see you guys possibly in a few days or a week when this is settled in a little bit. And I'll have a look at putting some fish in here, I reckon. Maybe the lavender endlers from downstairs, but maybe something different. I'll see you in a few days. We are back. So I think it's been about a week, roughly, since uh, you last saw this tank. A few little tweaks and a few little changes, to be honest. Um, when we got the plant delivery that week into the shop, we got some of this really nice Microthemum, uh, Microthemum Monte Carlo. I just thought it'd be quite cool to try and grow that underneath the Bucephalandras and underneath the Anubiasises. Anyway. I um, thought it'd be cool to grow that underneath. I'm going to have to keep it trimmed back. That's if it doesn't die. Because in all honesty, there's a lot of plants in here that are a little bit sensitive and I'm a little bit worried now. But pff, you've got to try these things, haven't you? But yeah, they'll look cool. And I've also put some uh, Anubius Nana bonsai down through the woodwork. But I'll show you that in a minute anyway. Um, that's all I've been doing. Light on, light off at about 8 to 10 hours a day, depending on when I forgot because I haven't got a timer for it but I would recommend always putting a timer on it because it's so much easier. Um, and then I've just been dosing with this, to be fair. Um, liquid CO2 boost from NT Labs and liquid plant boost from NT Labs. The nice thing with these is when you do a water change, you double dose it. I think on both of them, actually. After water changes and first dose, two pumps per 25 litres, yeah. So on both of them you double dose it, but on you just do a daily dosage of one pump per 25 litres. So this tank just being around 25 litres, it is literally like one of them, one of them, and that's it. So yeah, they, that's all it's had since it went in, and they're all doing okay. Obviously they're all quite slow growing plants, so they're not going to show a great deal of growth in the first week. But um, yeah, it's going quite well. Nothing's died. None of the plants have melted, which is good. Um, I lost a leaf on the white Anubias, but I think that was just a bit of stress moving. But we'll see if the rest of it melts, it melts. <laughs> I wanted to try it out. So um, let's give you a quick look at it closer up because you can't really see it from back there. And then I'm gonna go and get a little trio of lavender endlers from downstairs. I don't wanna put massive amounts in here, but I've got a, a large female, a small female, and I think a singular male. Um, I've got more males than females down there of the lavenders. So I think I'm gonna put them in there let them settle and maybe try and get a few babies out of them. I don't want to overstock it because I would like some space for some, possibly some babies to come up. So let me show you the tank quickly, maybe give you a run through and then um, yeah, we'll go get the fish and finish this tank off. So as I was saying, everything seems to be doing really, really well. You've got the little white Anubius there. You've got the jungle star, the, what was that one? Bucephalandra broadleaf and that was Anubius golden something. I'll put all the uh, names of the plants down in the comments so you can uh, see them. But yeah, this is the microthemum that I've put in. So this has started creeping out, but yeah, it'll creep out a lot more. And I'm hoping for a sort of carpet underneath all of the Anubiuses and the um, Bucephalandras that I robbed out the other tanks. So these are my boosts from a couple of other tanks. There's another one down there. Um, and yeah, looking really good. So the foreground is looking cool. Those are the little nanas, Anubius nana bonsai that I put in. Just tucked them into the crevices there and they're doing cool. This is that cool Java fern golden sunrise. I did notice if I go around here, oh, where's that new leaf? There. So that new leaf, you can see it's got like an orange tip to it. So I think that's what they mean by sunrise. I think that's the sort of coloration it comes out. I didn't end up putting the golden sparkle one in here just because it was a bit, well, 
already quite full, as you can see. The ISO SDs is there still. It's not melted. It's just poking its head above the sort of water. No, above the rock. So he will be uh, coming out if I can show you. Yeah, that's cool. Looking good. Um, I've got a little bit of a brown leaf on this Anubius, but it's that funny one that I uh, managed to get. So I've got to try and bring him back. But I think once they settle, Anubiuses are not renowned for it, but can get a little bit of melt when they're moving tank. Yeah, I really like it. Oh, I forgot, we got me, um, my pothos growing out the top as well. So his roots are in the water. So I'm hoping he'll just fill in and I'll probably, where he shoots out the top, I'll probably just keep wrapping him up and down that piece of wood so that he just grows in there. But yeah, for a nice little self-contained little tank, loving it. It's really, really cool. So all we've got to do is, I'm gonna go and get my lavender endlers from downstairs. So they're the last fish in that quarantine system. No, they're not. There's two lots of fish. There's the lavender endlers and there's the, what are they? Xenotoka. I'm going to leave the Xenotoka downstairs because, well, they're not going to fit in here. Um, and I need those tanks for something else. I've just, I've got a project that I would like to do and show you guys. So yeah, I'm going to go and grab those lavender endlers and let's get them introduced. So we've got our little lavender endlers. Um, there's quite a bit of java moss in here, but again, I'm just gonna let it go in there because I don't mind a bit of java moss in there. So we've got a little male and a couple of females. So this will be a little separated breeding tank, hopefully for them. So we've got one younger female and one older female and then one male in here. Um, I have got more downstairs, but I'll see how this little trio gets on, see if we can give the babies a bit more space to, uh, yeah, well, survive, I suppose, hide and survive. Oh, but yeah, they're going to look really cool. I'll give them a bit to settle down and then I'll show you through them and do a bit of a cinematic for you. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Really quick, simple skate. It just shows that you don't have to be overcomplicated. You know, what is it? Half a dozen rocks, big piece of bog wood. Um, and yeah, it all come together really, really nicely. Like, I think that's what people forget sometimes is you can be really simple and you can have fun. Everyone sort of panics and... Uh, a comment that I hear a lot in the shop is, oh, you know, I see people doing it online and mine's never as good as theirs. I think the exact same thing about mine. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have those skates that post them online and post them on YouTube and Instagram that think the same thing. They think, oh, I don't, you know, I don't really like that. But they put them out there because they still enjoyed it. They still are proud of what they created. And as long as you have fun with it, that's all that really matters in aquascaping. It's a hobby. It's meant to be enjoyable don't worry about it too much. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how many of these plants I can slowly kill over the course of the next few weeks and months. Um, now hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be all right. It's one of those things, you know, I've never had the chance to keep them before. I'm not a massive plant nerd. I, I know a lot about plants, but I wouldn't say that I'm amazing at them. So we'll see. Fingers crossed with the plant foods I'm using and you know the setup I've done with the substrate in there hopefully I've given them the best chance to uh, settle in and get going really and hopefully these lavender endlers can give us a few babies and a few more to add to the bloodline I've actually got more males of the lavender endlers than I do of the females now where they've bred and stuff so I'm tempted to actually put the lavender strain into a few other different endler strains you know obviously not the wild ones, because they're good to keep them true, but it'd be interesting to see some crosses between some of the like non-wild and non-true form endlers. So things like the, the cobra skin ones and the, um, I'm trying to think now, a couple of the other ones, whichever ones, you know. It'd be just interesting to see what the violet coloration brings into those fish. So might have a go at that maybe in the future, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I hope that we can get a few babies from these. I'm definitely going to need to block up that in uh, that intake though once they get going. So uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, if you've got to this point, thank you so much for watching. As always, um, I think I've just hit 30,000 subscribers, which is crazy to be honest. Like um, going back a year, I'm only posting what once a week or so, maybe if I'm lucky. And I had a good a good amount of time off uh, when my baby boy was born. So Thank you to the 30,000 of you that are subscribed and watching regularly. Um, thank you very much. To the ones that aren't subscribed, subscribe. I want to get to the, I don't know, I don't really know what the plan is to be honest. I want more fish tanks, that's the plan. That's the ultimate goal, isn't it? So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I don't know what's coming next. Ah. 
got some cool fish shipments coming up actually. Watch out for them, they'll be up soon. Uh, maybe some fish for a future project for me. We'll see, I'll see you in the next one.